Hello guys, my name is Lucas and welcome. I'm so sorry I didn't upload a video in quite a while, but today we're going to be covering a topic which a lot of people have asked about, and that is SQL injections and how to prevent SQL injections. So if you don't know, SQL injections are one of the most basic ways of hacking into someone's database. And we do that by entering an input that was not expected by our program. So for example, let's remember a little bit how our login function worked. Basically, we have a normal statement in a query. So we select password ID from users where username equals login user, right? So we here, we type our username. Let's do that right now. So we type in our username, test user, and we type in our password. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We log in, all right? And that's pretty normal. But what happens if, let's say for some odd reason, I don't know the username, I just know the password, but I know the ID of this user. We could do something, and this is going to be a SQL injection, is we type something like this, or ID equals one. And then I type in the password, which I know, log in, and we could log in, even though what I typed on that box is not my username. So some of you might be a little bit confused of what's happening. So let's explain that here. What we just did was call a SQL injection. And basically we're injecting a SQL statement, a query in our variable. And let me uh, bring this up and I'm going to increase the size of this a little bit. So basically what we did is similar to having this. Let me remove this comment. So basically when we type that in our login uh, input box for our application, for our PHP file, it was the same as if the statement was this to begin with. So where username is equals whatever, we don't care what that is, or the ID is equals one. So we didn't have to know the username. We could modify the SQL by injecting our own statement inside this variable. So that's very, very scary because what happens if something, instead of doing or ID equals one, they did something like this, drop table users. If they did something like that, they could basically destroy our whole database, right? Because they are injecting a very harmful SQL in this case. They could do something like update and give themselves a lot of coins, but they could, they could also select the information of a lot of users. And how we structure this um, is actually a little bit harder to do some stuff, but a lot of times these SQLs uh, have something like where username is equals login user, and then they have something like and uh, password equals uh, password, right? So it would be something like uh, login pass. So this, they could, in the login pass, they could say something like login pass is whatever, or one is equals to one. And, and that will be always true, right? So they could log in into anybody's account without actually having the password just by passing in the conditional statements here. So let me get rid of this up here. So now we understand what an injection is and how dangerous they are. So how can we protect ourselves from these injections? I already show you in Unity that we could actually log in by just typing or uh, an SQL injection. So we're going to use prepared statements, all right? So prepared statements are something that you can do with PDO or um, MySQLi. And actually right now we're using MySQLi and basically those are enhanced versions of PHP. Um, we're going to be using MySQL I, which literally stands for MySQL Improved, all right? So if you go to connection settings, you see that we already are using MySQL I. 
this is a MySQL I um, object. So we can use functions from this object, from this class that allow us to prepare our statement to expect specific types of like data. So if they find in the variable something like a SQL statement or or a condition or something, they're going to reject that. It's not going to work because they are expecting a specific type of data. All right, let's see it in action. So here, oops, I'm going to comment this old things. Um, remember, this is dangerous. So now we want to do a prepared statement. All right, so SQL. First of all, we need a SQL, which is very similar to what we had originally. But instead of having the variable there, we're going to have a question mark. All right. So we're username equals question mark. All right. That's our SQL. Now we want to create a statement. All right. And statement comes from our connection, which remember is a MySQL I object. And we're going to use the function prepare. And this arrow here, oops, sorry. This arrow here basically is like, what in C sharp we do as a dot. So it's basically telling us that we're using a function or a property from this object. So here we use something like an arrow, right? So we are preparing this SQL, all right? So, all right, in my SQL I, we want to prepare this SQL statement. I mean, we make a statement from that. And then we're going to use a function called bind parameters, all right? And in bind parameters, we're telling this object, all right, this SQL is going to replace this question mark with a parameter, which is going to be of type string, all right? And I'm going to leave the links to all the documentations for this on the description of this video, but basically this could be an integer, it could be a Boolean, in our case it's going to be a string, right? So it's, we use an S. And if you had two uh, values coming in in your statement, we would do something like this, and then we'll put the values here and maybe log in pass or something like that. But for this SQL, we're just going to need one value. So we bind this string type parameter into our statement. And what follows is very simple. We execute the statement. So again, statement, this is like saying statement.execute, right? So we run this function. And then finally, we create the result. And Again, we just simply get it through statement dot get result. And again, it's not a dot, but you get the idea. So we get the result and then it is same as what we used to have. Here we had the result by running the query directly in the connection, which was dangerous. Now we know how dangerous it is. Now we get the result from a prepared statement, which had our bind parameters which is the login user, we get the result and then it should work on the same way, but it would it will not allow us to inject SQL statements uh, with the variable. So now we can try this one more time. So if we go back here, we can try to do the same we did, which was this or ID equals one like this. And here uh, the password, login, Username does not exist because basically is turning all this into a string uh, which cannot find, right? He's trying to find this as a username. It's not actually uh, finishing our, our variable name and then giving it a condition or anything. We're not able to touch this SQL. Awesome. Now let's see if it works with the real user. So test user and the password and there we go. So that is how we can protect ourselves from SQL injections, which is actually one of the most common and uh, basic ways that someone can hack into your database. So guys, thank you so much for waiting for this video for so long. I know that I think from like video number six, people have been asking for me to make a video about um, my SQL injections. And yes, it's very important. I didn't want to confused some people at the beginning, especially since I thought we were learning some of the most basic concepts and now we can start talking more about security and things like that. So guys, if you think this video was useful, please let me know by hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. Also hit the notification bell so that you can be notified of 
new uploads. Thank you all so much for your support and I will see you all on the next video. Have a good one.